Alright, so welcome back guys, welcome to Shift First Time here. I'm Vision Hero Bon Team up bring you guys in a video. Today I'm gonna be going over my review for Power Rangers Dino Fury, the premier destination Dino Hedge. Now if Power Rangers is something you're interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. That would miss some more Power Rangers content from me moving forward. And don't forget to stick to the end because there'll be very important information regarding the future of Dino Fury on my channel. So definitely stick around for that. But let's begin. So we finally got our premiere for Power Rangers Dino Fury, like I said. And I gotta say it was a very good, very strong on premiere and something that I was very excited about. I know there are a lot of people out there that was kind of meh about Dino Fury given the past 10 years of PR, but I think that right now we're looking at some good content. Now, the first episode mainly focuses on the three Rangers, Red, Blue, and Pink, Zeto, Ali, and Amelia. Now, we get to see the episode at the beginning from Amelia's point of view. Um, as we've heard in the little, you know, tidbits of information from her, she works for this um business or whatever called buzzfeed i guess it'd be like your day of google or whatever and she's very into this paranormal activity and she wants to go and investigate what's been going on over at dino hedge because she's heard that there's stuff going on over on over there her boss isn't really big into that she thinks that you know it's all like you know a waste of time but amelia kind of tries to talk her into it and she her boss eventually gives into it now, she goes up there, and as she's going up there, she does run into Ollie, who is trying to meet up with his mom. They're out there. They're scientists. They're trying to also kind of explore this area. You got Amelia, who accidentally shoots him with this net thing at thinking that he's a ghost or whatever and you get some good banter between the two of them i like that kind of net thing it was kind of funny and cool um and then the two of them go and meet up with ollie's mom who's doing some research there and while she's doing research there she act she does uses this drone and accidentally sets off this i guess i don't know what you'd call it but triggers the a um, kind of like a setting or whatever. I don't know. I don't even know what I'd call it. But it, she triggers something and those statues light up. And you got some sort of like activity going on there. But they're kind of interrupted by the park ranger in the area. And to pretty much tells them to shut it down. You got Ollie's mom who is taken because they need to make us give a statement as to what was going on. And Amelia and Ollie stay behind. Now... I don't think um, Ollie's mom is going to play this big role. I think it was just, you know, set up and just plot movement. I don't think she she's going to play a big role. I could be wrong. But I just don't see it. Maybe she will do something regarding tech because it looks like she's very into technology and stuff. But I also believe that that's where Mick will come in. But I don't know. I doubt she'll be playing that big well role. They could surprise us. I mean, the parents in um, Beast Morphers did play a, a big role here and there. Or, you know, a reoccurring role there. But I just don't see Ollie's mom being that big of a character. I just saw her as mainly just plot point. But she leaves Ollie and Amelia behind, telling Ollie to pack up their stuff. They're moving on and leaving the site. And you get some banter between the two of them. Ollie's more of this pragmatic person who believes that there's only things in regarding truth. And of course, like we know already, Amelia's into paranormal activity. So they get some banter between the two of them because they kind of have convict conflicting viewpoints and i'm very interested to see what that what goes on there i really hope they capitalize on these two different differing viewpoints and maybe it'll be part of the season part of their development as they kind of grow close as teammates i really hope that's something that, that they do rather than just kind of throwing it at the wayside i hope it's a reoccurring thing where the two of them kind of you know have disagreements have banter between it i hope that's something but as they're packing up, you got Void, no Void Knight, who for some mysterious reason decides to drop in at that very moment. Um, usually, I I would probably take off points there because it's like, for some reason, he just happens to show up at that very moment. But at the same time, I'm kind of going to give it a pass there. But he, I like how they did this because he just blasts a hole into the ground because he's looking for the Sporax. 
And he just pretty much blasts a hole and jumps down. I really like that. It's kind of different. And he pretty much goes down to the base. And he runs into... I think her name is Solon. Or Solon. I don't really know her name. She's this dinosaur creature. Now, as Void Knight enters, what I'm going to assume is going to be their base. You got Solon who's trying to activate um, Zato's, I guess, cryopod where he's been in a, sleeping for the past 10, 000, 65 million years. And now this is where I get questionable. Because at, she was trying to activate the pod and wake up Zato prior to Void Knight even entering the room. Because we see her in the command center prior to Void Knight trying to... To get the Sporax. So how did she know. That she needed to wake up Zeta. Or was she just happening. To try to wake him up. As Void Knight came into the room. It, there's just issues in my opinion there. As to like how she knew. how Why she woke him up at that moment. Did she know Void Knight was coming. Did she sense it. There's just questions there. But you got Void Knight. Who's trying to get the information from her. And he eventually goes to attack her. And as he she, as he's trying to attack her, you got Ollie who uses one of the swords and protects her. And you got the you got him and the and you got Amelia who shoots her net at Void Knight, disabling him for a few minutes. Now, as after they do that, you got um Solan who tosses them this key that'll activate the henchmen who are the the I guess guardians of the place. However, at, before they can even Catch it, you got Void Knight who is able to catch it and activates the henchmen who end up becoming his soldiers and fight for him. I guess they're going to be the foot soldiers for the season. And I get from there, we get this fight between the Ollie and Amelia unmorphed trying to take on the henchmen while you got um, Void Knight continuing to look for the, for the Sporax. Now, as they're fighting, you got Salon who ends up tossing them the key, the keys or what the power keys. And after they, after their swords, I guess begin to um, shine, and you got them having activated their morphers that happen to appear on their arms. I like this. It reminds me of Lost Galaxy. Then, like I said, she pass, she throws them the keys. They activate them and they morph into rangers. Now, I really like how they. Act of, they continue with continuity continuity here because you get got Ali who gets excited about being a Power Ranger and they fight the henchmen morphed now and you get some good fight scenes. They're average, you know, fight scenes here. I liked how they did it in the base and you got them fighting and I really like how they got this banter between Ali and Amelia here again where you got. Amelia talking about how much power they got and what else they get. And you got Ollie who mentions that they're going to get Zords and says, you know, you should have watched the news. You know this information, which I feel like is a dig because I feel like she should have known this news given that she's a reporter reporter and everything. For some reason, she doesn't know this news. So I see this more as a dig rather than a con for the episode. But they're trying to f fight the... Uh, the hedgemen, and during this, you got Void Knight who ends up finding them. How and as the, he's getting them, you got Salon who's finally able to act, activate the pod and wake up Zato, who wakes up. He, you know, takes down two hedgemen and then goes for Void Knight. Now he's trying to get the sparks away from Void Knight. However, he accidentally unleashes them as he's fighting Void Knight, and they escape. And you got Void Knight who leaves, and you got the Sporax who go after, who pretty much fly out the room and go and into hiding. And you got Zeto and the and Ali and Amelia who demorph. Now this was a cool and interesting thing because you got Ali or Zeto who's able to read minds. So before they can even introduce themselves, you got Zeto who already knows information about them, which is pretty cool. I really like that. It's a different kind of power there, and you got him. Who pretty they he pretty much from there kind of goes on with Salon urging him to tell them the story of his backstory. Now from there we get backstory regarding how I guess he's from this planet called Rafcon where the Sporex attacked. They ravaged his planet and him and the knights of Rafcon tried to 
you know, stop them. However, they ravaged his planet and then set their sights on Earth. Now you got the him and the knights trying to fight back and protect Earth with the help of the dinosaurs. And they were badly losing. And that's when the Morphing Masters showed up. Now, we had originally heard from them back in, C in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 1, where it was pretty much just a throwaway line. Now, I know that they've also been introduced and seen in the Boom Studios comics. I'm not really into the comics, so I wasn't aware of that. But I really liked how they brought them back here. And it's revealed there that they tapped into the morphing grid and made and gave um Zato and the Knights the power their powers and turned them into Power Rangers using the morphing grid. And with that power they were able to push back the Sporax and defeat them. However, the rest of Zato's team was lost in the battle. And from there, you got Zato and Salon who were able to capture the Sporax and have and they've been protecting them and hiding them in their base, which I really liked. I liked how they brought back the Morphing Masters. That was a pretty cool thing. And I'm kind of curious as to if um, they're going to introduce the Gold Rangers similar to Zane, because I feel like the, the backstory between Zato is similar to Andros. And one thing I hope they do is introduce this whole fish out of water aspect with Zato. I think that'd be a really cool thing to do. Whether or not they'll do that is questionable at the moment. But meanwhile, you had Void Knight back uh, on the surface with one of the um, Sporax who hatches. I guess these things are kind of like eggs. They're going to hatch. They went into hiding. And, and I guess one by one, they're going to hatch. And they'll end up being the monsters of the week type of thing. But you got one who hatches next to Void Knight. And he pledges his loyalty to Void Knight. And is going to help him with, with whatever plan he has. And then you pretty much end the episode pretty much with Zato saying that he's going to train Amelia and Ollie, and they're going to become Power Rangers to fight and protect the Earth from the Sporax. So, I really liked it. It was a very strong episode. There's a few things here and there that I didn't like. Um, you got good information and backstory and, you know, character information regarding uh, um, Amelia and Zato. You, you didn't get much on Ollie, but this episode two is a Ollie-centric episode. So, I'm assuming we're going to get more there. So, I'm not going to take off any points there. Now, as for a grade, if I had to give this episode a grade, I want, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of, out of 5. I really want to give it a 5, but there's some issues here, like I mentioned, that is kind of taking me away from giving it a 5. But I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5 because I feel like it was very strong. Just a few possible nitpicks. I could give it a 5, just, give, going, just kind of looking at, over these nitpicks. So I'm going to give it a 4.5. At very close to a five, but that's where I stand. Now, as for my now, as for the information regarding the future of Dino Fury on my page, there is not going to be a review of every single episode every week. I don't want to give you guys reviews because I want to talk about other topics. I'm only putting out one episode of Power Rangers content a week on Mondays, so I don't want to bombard you with just every week being reviews. Instead, I'm just going to be doing like I did the premiere. I'm going to do episode four because that's when um, Izzy and Javi are going to be um, introduce and then I'm gonna from there I'm just gonna be doing the mid season finale, the mid season premiere, and then the season finale. Nothing else in between there. Now unless there's a big episode either I or you guys, the fans, think I should review, I will review it that Monday. However, if you think it's an episode I should review, please let me know ASAP because I will be doing or recording my reviews sat that after the episode airs on Sunday or Monday, the latest on Monday. But please let me know so I can get that, uh, that review up and done and have it that Monday. So definitely either drop it in one of my Power Rangers videos or DM me on Twitter or Instagram at ASAP after that episode airs. That way I can get my review done and give it to you guys that Monday. So yeah guys, that's my review for Power Rangers Dino Fury Episode 1, Destination Dino Hedge. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. There to miss more Power Rangers content from me moving forward. And you go follow me on Instagram and Twitter, which is linked in the about section on my YouTube channel. As always, I'm Vision Hero Boy Entertainment, and I'll see you next time.